Um, good afternoon. I think we might find um, that before we came here, there were probably two groups of people up here, and probably Sandy and I were going to be closer than uh, uh, Joan and John, but we'll see when Sandy speaks. Um, I'd like to put a slightly different perspective on it and try and lift it up a little bit. Um, there are four cases that are relevant to directors. The first one being Filtex, I think is just an, anom an anomaly that doesn't actually warrant a lot of discussion. Um, it won't hold water moving forward, so I think we can park that. The other three cases, though, being Lombard and Nathan's and Centro, are not actually a problem for directors as I see it. I don't actually think the situation has changed for them at all. Um, possibly what has changed is that if you aren't looking at it in the right way and you're doing something, let us say, naughty, the system has caught you out for the first time. So that if we look at Centro, I think we all understand that the distinction between short and long term um, debt is rather critical to an investor's perspective. I think if we look at Nathan's, we can realise that the way they structured the information or whether they knew what the information said was about continuing to get money in from depositors without going bust. So they were more focused on the exit than they were on the process. Um, and the case is going to be, I think, the most leading case for the next 10 to 15 years. Um, in particular, there's a very interesting debate there about whether um, you can be reckless if you didn't have a state of mind. So if you're asleep at the wheel, could you actually be reckless because you weren't actually making a decision? And um, it's a really uh, interesting debate. Lombard is, I think, even more um, simplistic. There are two things that were really interesting in the director's behaviour. The first one was that they actually never visited the loans, uh, the buildings that they were loaning, or the developments they were loaning mon money to. You probably could have done that in half a morning if you put your mind to it, but they never did it. So they actually didn't use the information they had and put it into um, any form of benefit to their role. Secondly, and most importantly for all of us, every time they reported, they used to include the amount of cash available in their reports to, uh, in their prospectus. In the last one, they took that out. So. If you think about it, the fact that they actually took it out implies they actually knew quite well what was going on, but they were focused on the wrong things. So from my point of view, they shouldn't have done that. It's relatively simple, and we can back up the truck a bit and relax. ASIC has been making a lot of noise about these issues, but I think you'll find um, in a speech that um, they, a statement they recently issued, they talk about what they expect of directors, and they had nine points. Those nine points are really back to where we all were before, and they talk about it in a much more strategic view than a detailed view. So under competency, you needed to understand the business, you need to understand the financial position of the company and how that is reflected, you need to read the information provided to you, and there is a difference between an exec and a non-exec director. You need to have constructive scepticism. You need to have an inquiring mind. Delegation, you cannot delegate your opinion where it is required. You cannot delegate responsibility. And finally, and most importantly, act honestly. Do not use your position to advantage yourself and handle conflict of interests appropriately. So I think where all these cases are going is to actually say if the directors turn up and they're honest, and they're clean, and they understand or talk about the dynamics that I think John referred to in the wider sphere, then it is most unlikely that they're going to have a problem moving forward. So if they've done their best, they understand what their business is, and they rely on expert advice, they will get through this. If they create an environment which allows them to manipulate the scrum, they will have a problem. So, that's my view on that. Will it deter um, good directors? I don't think so. Um, will it lead to any significant change in director behaviour? Probably it will, and that's the most unfortunate thing. Because for a company to work, senior management and the board need to be at one. 
what will happen in the short term, hopefully not in the medium term, is that I think there is a distinction between responsibilities of senior management and the board's outlook. So the board will be looking to you more and more to front up and give the less than perfect directors comfort as to process, comfort as to what's going on. How do you overcome that? I think you actually need to come back a little bit from what your normal role is and again follow where John was going about sharing with the board a far more um, detailed view on the horizon. So if I was turning up as a CFO to a board next week, instead of sending out a board, a board pack, I'd probably ensure that somewhere in that pack is a view on the horizon. So they can actually see the trends both globally, locally, and inside your own company. So, you know, not only is the cash and the way it's going clear, but we're t talking about ev the, basically a thumbnail sketch of the world as it affects your company. Now, if you've shared that with the board, you've done half your business. So that, God forbid, you end up in a company that's going bust and we have to come in and help you. Um, you've actually helped the board have a platform from which they can make the right decisions. That's, in essence, what you have to do. You then come to the detailed part about um, derivatives. You'll probably go and hire an expert who's going to tell everyone this is what the derivatives say. And that will be fine as long as the horizon and that simple thumbnail sketch is out there because then you've brought everyone onto the same platform. Everyone has the ability to understand where the urgency, where the next um, opportunity or problem is going to come, and then you're all in it together. So you've got to bring basically the board and management together. You have to create the platform, and then I think half your issues will be dealt with. Mm -hmm.